going to be talking about power sets and Cartesian products. Um, and we'll see how much of it we can get through. Uh, so first, a little bit of review of some of the things we've learned so far. Uh, so we said this uh, symbol means it's an element of. Uh, this symbol means is a subset of. Uh, the U means union. The upside down U means intersection. Um, C of A is the complement of A. And then this is just an example of set builder notation, which we learned last time. Does anyone have any questions over the things we've learned so far? All right. Uh, so first we've got power sets. Um, so power set is written using um, P of A or like an exponent to what's an A in the exponent. And this is just the power set of A. Um, and the power set of a set is the set of all subsets of that set. Um, so if we had, for example, if A is the set one and two, the power set of A includes this set, set that has one, the set that has two, so the set that has one and two, and the empty set or the null set, because these are all the possible subsets of A. Does that make sense? Okay. And you have to pay attention that the elements of a power set are sets. So one is not an element of this power set. Um, the set that contains one is an element of this power set. Um, and we also have the empty set uh, being an element of the set. Um, which is different from saying, it's just kind of a weird thing to think about, but that's a little different than saying um, uh, that there's like nothing is an element of this set. So you have to pay attention that this is a set of sets, uh, not a set of elements like we're used to. Uh, so a few practice questions. Um, we don't have to do all of them. This first one is, if A, if A is a set with the elements five and six, what is the power set of A? Does anybody have any ideas about this? And you can put, you can put your answer in the chat if you want. Yep, got a couple answers and they both look correct. Um, so the set includes five, or the set of five, the set of six, the set of five and six, and the empty set. How about uh, if A just has one, what is the power set of A then? Yep, that's right, Eli. It's gonna be the set of one and then the, uh, the null set. Uh, let's skip to this last one. The set A has n elements. How many elements does the power set of A have? And the notation that we use for power set might give you a hint for this. That's true, it will have a lot. Some of you might not. Um, know what this is yet in math and that's that's totally fine. If you do have a guess, you're free to put it put it in the chat. Hmm. So it's not gonna be n times two. It's actually gonna be two to the power of n. Uh, we can talk about, about what that means briefly. Uh, where is the With it. Um, there we go. Uh, so if I have two to the power of n, that means two times itself n times. 
So like if it's three, this would be it. Uh, if it n is four, it would be this. Uh, we keep going. Uh, so that's how you find the number of elements in the power set of a set. Um, it's two to the power of the number of elements. Um, All right, and that's why it's called a power set. Um, yeah, let's clear this and keep going. Any questions so far? All right. Now we're gonna talk about the Cartesian product. So the Cartesian product of two sets is the set of all ordered pairs, uh, A, B, where A is an element of A and B is an element of B. Um, and it's written there in set builder notation if you wanna think of it that way. Um, so if we have two sets, um, it's all the possible pairings of the elements from set A with, this elements of, with the elements of set B. So if A has elements one and two, B has elements three and four. The Cartesian product of A and B, which you can just say is A times B, is going to be uh, one, three, one, four, two, three, and two, four. Um, because these are all possible pairings of elements from set A with elements of set B. Um, and it's worth noting that the elements of the Cartesian product are not sets, they're ordered pairs, like you might have seen. Um, in a coordinate plane. Um, any questions about the Cartesian product? All right. Got a few practice questions here. Let's start with that first one. What is the Cartesian product of the set with elements one and the set with elements two and three? So remember, it's going to be all of the ordered pairs of one element from the first set and one element from the second set. Yeah, that looks right. Uh, it's going to be, um, it's going to have one comma two, and it's going to have one comma three. The second one has a bit of a long answer, but anyone want to try the second one? The Cartesian product of one, two, three, and four, five. Uh, that looks right, Lily. Uh, looks good. Yeah, and Eli wrote it with the parentheses and the um, curly brackets, so we know what we're talking about is sets and ordered pairs. Looks good. How about that third one? This one has a pretty short answer. Cartesian product of the set of one and the set of two. Yep, just has just has one ordered pair, one comma two. And how about the last one? The uh, power set of the Cartesian product of one, two, and three. So first you're gonna find the Cartesian product, and then you're gonna take the power set of that. All right, let's, some people are working on it, that's great. And we can go through it together. 
Um, so first we're gonna find the Cartesian product. So we only have two elements in um, this set and then one element in this set. So the Cartesian product isn't too hard. It's going to be, that's not the best curly bracket, curly bracket I've ever drawn. So this is the Cartesian product, um, and this is set A. So now we're going to take the power set of this, which is all subsets of this. So the first one that we'll get out of the way is the null set, because that is a subset of every set. It's easy to forget about, so I'll write that one down first. Then we'll have a set that contains just the first element. We're going to need both curly brackets and parentheses. And that second one and then our last element of the power set is going to be going to have both of our ordered pairs. We have to close the curly brackets again. So we have one, two, three, four elements in this power set. All right. Anyone have any questions, anything you want to go back on that you didn't understand? All right, we will keep going. Uh, this next part's going to be a little challenging. Uh, uh, we'll just, just do our best with it. I think it's pretty interesting. So hopefully some of you are familiar with this idea of the coordinate plane. So this coordinate plane is where we have all the real numbers on one axis. So that's just pretty much every number. The positive numbers, the negative numbers, it includes decimals rational numbers, irrational numbers. And we have that on two axes. And then we can go to any point along here and we can represent it as an ordered pair of two real numbers. So like this point would be two comma two uh, because two is where we are in the X axis and two is where we are on the Y axis. This point might be one comma three. So we are out one on the x-axis and three up on the y-axis. Um, and we can also have um, decimals and things like that. And we can have negatives. So we might have like here would be uh, negative two and a half comma one. There we go. And so this is how the coordinate plane works. Maybe some of you are familiar with it. Um, so what we can do is use the Cartesian product to create this coordinate plane. So we can think of the coordinate plane as a Cartesian product of the real numbers times the real numbers. So remember, the real numbers are what we have on the x-axis, just all the numbers, and the same thing on the y-axis. And if we do the Cartesian product of this, we're going to get every possible pair of uh, real numbers, which happens to be the same set of numbers that we have on the coordinate plane. So this is how we can construct the coordinate plane um, without having to draw anything. Any questions about that? All right, we will keep going. So what we can do is we can also apply this to higher dimensions. So what we just talked about, this was two dimensions. We had the real numbers along the x-axis and the real numbers along the y-axis. And so we took the Cartesian product of the real numbers twice. Now what we can do is say, let's add a z-axis. So that's just gonna be a third number in our 
um, in our points. So before we might have had one comma two. Now we're going to have a third number and let's say that's, I don't know, seven. Uh, so that would be one, two, seven. It's so like a point around here. Um, and we can do the same thing. So we're going to take the real numbers times the real numbers times its real numbers as a Cartesian product. So this first real number is just going to be the x, the second one is going to be the y, and the third one is going to be the z. And actually, what we can do is take this um, Cartesian product as many times as we want and create as many dimensions as we want. Uh, and this is how mathematically we talk about dimensions like the fourth dimension or the fifth dimension or the 200th dimension. Even though we can't visualize those at all, um, you know, we can't really know what four dimensions looks like. We can only really imagine what three dimensions look like. But we can construct any number of dimensions we want using the Cartesian product. Any questions? All right, so now we'll do a couple of practice questions uh, using that information. So the first one, how would you write the four-dimensional coordinate space as a Cartesian product? So that's four dimensions. We're going to need four points in our answers. Yep, Eli's got it. It's going to be r times r times r times r, which we could also write as r to the fourth, um, but either one works. Now, how about this next one? How could you construct a grid of only integer coordinates as a Cartesian product? So here we're talking about all the real numbers. So that's like, it also includes fractions like 1.5, 1.7, or dec decimals like one third, or pi. Um, how about if we only care about integers, how could we create a two-dimensional coordinate system as a Cartesian product? And as a hint, we uh, write the integers using z. Yeah, it's going to be z times z, the Cartesian product of z and z. So remember, uh, z is a set of all the integers. So that's going to be like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, and then the negative ones. And so the Cartesian product is going to be every ordered pair, uh, or the Cartesian product z times c is going to be every ordered pair of integers. So that's going to be all of the grid points on this line. So like here, or here, or here, or here, or over here. Um, nowhere in the white space, though. Um, we still have a bit more time. I do have a Kahoot, but first we are gonna go finish up some of the questions we skipped at the start. Uh, as the answers. Does someone want to try to answer number three on this one? So now we're back on power sets. What is the power set of the empty set? Yeah, so this one's a little um, little weird. It's kind of hard to think about, but it is still just the empty set. Uh, so you can take the power set of the empty set as many times as you want, and you'll still have the empty set. Because the only subset of the empty set is the empty set. So you're just left with the empty set. Um, that's that. How about number four? If B only has the element one and A is the power set of B, 
then what is the power set of set A? Um, we will just go to the answer for this one. Cuts. Skip it. Yeah, here it is. Wait, did I include this question? Well, it looks like I didn't write the answer to this question, but we'll just do it together. So the power set of B is going to be one and the null set. So that's all the subjects of B. And then we're going to take the power set of that. And this is going to be just going to be the same thing. We're going to have one, and we're going to have the empty set. So this one's kind of similar in that you can take the power set as many times as you want, and you get the same answer. All right, so we did all the practice questions. Now we will switch to doing the Kahoot. I think someone asked for the for the 80s instant class time, so we'll put that on. Uh, so feel free to join the Kahoot. And we'll get through as much of this as we can. I put a few of the questions we didn't get to last week in this. Um, so we'll have some review of last week's material as well. And I'm going to start it in about two minutes so that we can have some time to do the questions. What else wants to join? All right, we will get started. Uh, if you're not like a hoot, hopefully you can watch and still do the questions on your own. Uh, Yeah, looks like everyone got that right. I confused myself on it, but good job, everyone.
Hmm. So this one was a little tricky. You have to kind of pay attention to the way they're written. Uh, so it's going to be read as the set of all integers. So that's Z means the integers. Such that, or bar means such that, uh, X plus 10 is an element of the natural numbers. Um, so this one was talking about real numbers. Um, and then this one had nat had a real numbers over here. So you have to make sure you're using the right sets. Guessing that W should be a Z, huh? or maybe it should be the oh, W is the whole numbers. Never mind. W is the whole numbers. Oh, so this is going to be true. Um, so this is the set of all whole numbers such that x plus 5 is 15. Um, and 10 satisfies this because 10 plus 5 is 15. Uh, and it turns out that's going to be the only element of this set is 10. So we're talking about the cardinality of the null set. Um, and the null set has no elements, so the number of elements in it is zero. Well, this one has a typo. I think this should be another bar for cardinality. Well, so this one was pretty hard. Um, so we're talking about the union of A, B, and the null set and then how many elements that has. So remember, union is going to include every element that's in any of these sets. Um, so we don't actually care about the null set because it has no elements, and it's really going to be the union of A and B, which has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So the cardinality of this is going to be 6. Well, has that same mistake. So this should be a, a bar, but you can still do the question. So now we're looking at, uh, so this is a mistake, six should not be right. Uh, that's a mistake on Kahoot, but uh, zero is the answer because we're looking at intersection and the intersection of any set with the null set is gonna be empty. So it's gonna have no elements. So the cardinality is gonna be zero. Now we're back on the stuff we learned today. And remember, that's going to be the Cartesian product. So the set of every uh, ordered pair where one element is from each set. Yeah, you okay, guys so did a good job on this one. So we're going to have all these ordered pairs. Um, where each number is chosen from uh, the two sets. Well, and this one's the power set. 
So what is the power set of A? That's going to be the set of all subsets of A. Mm. So the first one is going to be that null set. Null set is a subset of every subset of every set. Um, then we're going to have each element individually, then each set of two elements, uh, and then the one set of three elements. So this is all the subsets of A. This guy is missing sets. The blue one is missing a uh, subset that have multiple elements, and the yellow one is missing. Uh, a few it's missing the empty set and it's missing ones that have one or three elements so green is only one that has every subset of a This is going to be true because the power set is the set of all subsets. And one, uh, the set that has one, is going to be a subset of itself. Yeah, so it's going to be false. Um, so the Cartesian product of A and B is going to be only the ordered pair of one, two. So that's going to look like this. So even though one is in the parentheses like this, it's not going to be a set on its own. So one is not an element of this power set, or yeah, of this power set. Yep. So uh, the, we start with the Cartesian product of A and B. That's going to be just the ordered pair one, comma two, uh, and that's going to be only one element um, in the set. So one and two are not separate elements; they're part of the same element. So this is a cardinality of one. This is going to be our last question. You guys did pretty well on this one. Uh, so because it's the intersection, we know there's only going to be elements that are in both sets. Um, and this guy is going to have a bunch of elements. Um, but we only care about the ones that are also in B. Uh, and you'll notice that this first set is the same. So we don't really have to worry too much um, about these three elements, because uh, the only elements that are going to be both A and B are going to be the ones that are made of one, this one and two and this one. And two. So we can just find what B is, and that's going to be our answer.
Uh, that is all we have for this week. Uh, thank you guys for bearing with the technical difficulties. I hope you learned a lot. Um,